Hey everyone, today I'm out here at Haji Lin to do some urban sketching as well as give you guys the real world review of the M1 iPad Pro and I've not even started yet and I'm half drenched in my own sweat So this is Haji Lin Haji Lin is a shopping street here in Singapore and on both sides of the street there are shops selling novelty items like collector toys, fashion, bags there are many interesting things to draw here and some of the shop fronts are really beautiful such as this particular one I really like the plants so before I get too carried away looking at all the shops let me find some place to sit down and show you guys the tablet Urban sketching by the way if you don't know is just drawing on location the fun part is drawing on location the less fun part is being out under the hot sun with very humid weather so today I feel like drawing that shop there in the background I'm drawn to this because of the striking colors and the shape and here at my back there is the Sultan Mosque which I have drawn countless times all the tables and chairs are locked due to the partial lockdown that's currently happening but thankfully I've brought my own chair let me show you what's in my sling bag so it's just the Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro so this is the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro from 2021 I bought this with 256 gigs of storage and 8 gigs of RAM so the design looks similar to the previous model from 2020 it's slightly thicker and heavier this is about 39 grams heavier compared to the previous model and about 49 grams heavier compared to the 2018 model and you can see it's very reflective and right now I have this at auto brightness so um, it's almost max brightness but I'm seated under the shade and now the iPad Pro is under strong sunlight so you can see the contrast is affected but it's not really a problem because I mean how often are you using this under the Sun the colors on this tablet is fantastic the weight is definitely something you have to get used to because I mean just from shooting this segment alone with me holding the iPad Pro like this with one hand I can really feel my hand um, it's quite tired so usually when I'm sketching outdoors I would have my hand like this but with this particular tablet I don't think I will be able to stand and hold a tablet like this to draw so if you really need portability if you need something that is lighter more comfortable to hold while you stand and sketch or just more comfortable to hold overall the 11 inch model is the one to get the iPad Pro has 120 Hz Pro Motion so when it comes to scrolling animation of the apps opening up and closing panning around zooming in and out and all those navigation um, those will be really smooth and for this particular tablet there are four way speakers two here and two here this is the Thunderbolt 4 port the resolution is very high there is no noticeable pixelation when using the tablet at normal arm's length away this is just a really nice display now there are some reports of the shadow effect at the edges let me show you by the way the performance on this tablet it's very smooth very snappy opening apps web browsing um, drawing performance it's really smooth so the shadow effect um, I can definitely see the shadow effect at the edges but this display is still considered a laminated display having a laminated display just means that when you are drawing the gap between the line and the pen tape that gap will be very small so while you are drawing it really looks like the line is appearing on the glass itself now here you can see a lot of reflection because it's reflecting light however when I am drawing I usually have the iPad pointing at me like this so you don't really see the reflection and I can see good contrast and colors now if you want to get a matte screen protector 
The matte screen protector is going to create a white haze that is going to cover the whole screen making it very difficult for you to see what's on the display. So that's the downside to matte screen protectors. In case you don't know, the Apple Pencil is sold separately for 129 US dollars and it snaps here to the side for charging. This is actually my Apple Pencil from two years ago so the battery life isn't that great anymore but I've never had any problems with battery life because it's always at the side here on the iPad Pro for charging. It's always ready to be used. Currently I have strict palm rejection turned on in ProGrade so if I draw with my finger or if I place my palm like this, it's not going to introduce any stray strokes. So palm rejection, it works perfectly. Alright, let's draw the building. Now I have to draw really fast because the sunlight is coming towards me. So I'm going to create a few layers first and I'm going to have the first layer for the drafting lines just to make sure that I can fit this whole building onto the canvas. The Apple Pencil also supports pressure and tilt sensitivity. So as mentioned earlier, the drawing performance, um, it's really smooth. Everything feels very snappy. It's actually as fast as the 2018 model, which I have been using for the past two and a half years. So if you're thinking of upgrading from the 2018 or the 2020 model to this new iPad Pro, I'm not sure if I would recommend that unless you really want to get a mini LED display, which I will talk more about later on. So drawing on the iPad Pro or on any iPad, it's very intuitive. So the pen is smooth, but as mentioned, it's not slippery. I used to use matte screen protectors, but um, I like to draw outdoors very often, so the matte screen protector it's getting a bit frustrating uh, to look at. Now for the new iPad Pro, for this M1 iPad Pro, if you create A4 canvas at 300 dpi, you can get 92 layers so that's an increase over the previous generation which I, if I remember correctly is about 70 over layers. Being able to work directly on the iPad um, I would say it can make you more productive but uh, don't buy the iPad thinking that you are going to draw more. If you are already uh, drawing very frequently then yes getting an iPad would make a lot of sense because um, it will definitely help you draw more but if you are not drawing very frequently getting the iPad Pro is not going to help you draw more frequently. That's something I noticed because um, even though I have this, I have the 2018 model, I don't actually use the iPad Pro as much for drawing compared to drawing with my sketchbook. The M1 processor is definitely powerful but I can say the same to the processor, the A12 or A12X from the previous uh, generation as well. When drawing on location, you have to anticipate cars, vehicles, people blocking your view but thankfully it looks like it is going to go off soon. If you have a matte screen protector on the display, it's going to make it easier for your hands to glide on the display. Right now, my hands, my palms are a bit sweaty so um, there is additional friction which makes it a bit more difficult for me to glide on the display and by the way, if you have the glossy display, this is going to attract a lot of fingerprints which is very difficult to wipe off. The iPad Pro has been quite warm for the past hour that I have been using it so it's warm to the extent that I will not want to have this on my lap so I'm actually holding it like this. If you are using this at home, um, the auto brightness will not be that bright, it will not be at the maximum and hence your tablet will not be that hot but since I'm outdoors um, this is this is quite warm. So this is what I have so far and now it's time to color this so I need to turn this into a reference layer first and let's have red. Coloring is going to take some time. Let's see if I can feel this. I'm actually quite pleased with this sketch because I managed to get a lot of details 
in the scene so I have been drawing for about two hours and the battery life is now at 70% and that's actually quite good considering the tablet has been at maximum brightness throughout I can get around 10 hours with normal use at home let me show you how disgusting the surface is right now with all the hand grease and oil and fingerprints I actually wanted to sketch a bit more, sketch a bit longer, but it's starting to drizzle. Heavy rain is incoming. By the way, I'm not on my skateboard today because I don't want the grit from carrying my skateboard. I don't want that grit to go onto the glass of the iPad Pro. That would be disastrous. Back at home, I will use the tablet on a stand. I consider a stand to be an essential buy. So with this particular stand, I can actually have the iPad Pro at different angles. And this will allow me to work on the tablet for long periods of time without discomfort with proper posture. This stand, in case you're interested, is the Pablo PR100 stand. I bought two of this with my own money. This is an excellent stand and you can find this on Amazon using the link that I have for you in the video description below. If you want to get a case to protect the iPad Pro effectively, get a case that protects all the four sides, not just the front and back. So with my previous iPad Pro, I bought those slim cases um, just protecting the front and back and I have dents here, here and I have scratches at the bottom. This new display is now using mini LEDs. Basically the LEDs are much smaller so Apple managed to pack a lot more LEDs on this screen and hence it can now achieve higher maximum brightness. However, the typical brightness is still at 600 nits, which is to say that if you are just uh, browsing the web, checking emails, surfing social media, or even drawing with the drawing apps, it's going to be 600 nits. On Apple's website, they say the full screen brightness is up to 1000 nits. I have no idea what that means. And also you can get HDR brightness up to 1600 nits. When you're watching HDR movies, you can see better contrast. By the way, if you are watching iTunes HDR movies on this tablet, make sure that you are streaming. You are not watching the downloaded movie because the downloaded movie will show you standard dynamic range, whereas the streaming version will show you HDR. My camera probably won't be able to capture the higher dynamic range but let me just point to you what you can see on this new display so there is also dimming zones for this display which is to say that all the black areas that you see all the areas that do not have light do not have uh, lit pixels all those areas are going to be just pure black as if the ipad is not turned on you may have read about some blooming issues on this new display and that can happen at high contrast areas basically where you have black and really bright areas but if you have auto brightness turned on chances are you are probably not going to notice that blooming is only more noticeable when you are using the tablet at night and for some reason you have the tablet at really high brightness now this is currently playing at HDR and with the HDR version I can see details within this flame here as well as here. Now this scene is backlit so that's why we see this person here the silhouette it's almost completely black but we should be able to see details here for the lit areas with HDR. If you're watching this movie, which by the way is 1917, in standard dynamic range, the flames here will be almost blown out. It would be incredibly difficult to see the details within the flames. The quality of HDR on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is not as good compared to the OLED display on the iPhone. By the way, um, these two Screenshots are showing different colors. I'm not sure why, but in real life, they are identical. They show the same color. Anyway, um, when I'm comparing these two scenes side by side, both displays are bright. However, when I'm watching the OLED display, I can really feel like the flames, they are giving off light. 
Now this display is definitely bright, in fact brighter compared to OLED displays, but um, just for some reason when I'm watching this, there is better contrast. I feel like the flames are just giving out, giving off light. And this applies when you are watching other HDR content as well, especially HDR content on YouTube. When I stream the same movie on my 2018 iPad Pro, I can see the same details. It's just that the dark areas, the blacks, they are not as black, that's all. But to me, the mini LED display, um, to me, that's not a very big selling point. The bigger selling point is actually the M1 processor and the 8 gigs of RAM. However, even though this tablet is now more powerful compared to the previous model, it's actually not going to improve my productivity or help me create more content compared to the previous model. It's not going to help me check emails faster, draw faster or draw more because the bottleneck is actually not the hardware. Now, there are a lot of uh, YouTube creators talking about using this tablet for video editing. And this is a powerful tablet for editing videos. So a 10 minute 4K video will take about five minutes to export, which is great. However, during the export video exporting process, you have to keep the video app in front. If you switch to another app, the video export process will fail and you have to redo again. I'm not sure if people are editing videos on the iPad Pro because they find this to have more advantages than working with a laptop or a desktop or if it's because they just prefer the tablet form factor more. Personally for me, when it comes to editing videos, I will definitely go with desktop software. I mean, the main advantage of the iPad Pro or for the iPads is you can use it with the Apple Pencil and having this Apple Pencil doesn't really uh, improve video editing productivity. Maybe it does for you, but certainly not for me. So again, it comes down to individual preference and individual workflow. The mini LED display is currently only available on the 12.9 inch, not on the 11 inch, by the way. Not having mini LED to me, it's not a downside. Let's talk about storage capacity, like how much storage do you need to create a graphic design, digital art, how much storage do you need for digital painting. So the price of the 11 inch starts at 799 US dollars and for the 12.9 inch, it's $200 more expensive. It's $1,099 not inclusive of the Apple Pencil 2, which is $129. So the base models, um, they come with 128 gigs, which I think is a good amount of storage. If you want to upgrade, you can consider upgrading to 256 gigs of storage. Let's take a look at the file size for the sketch that I created um, yesterday. So that file, is 260 megabytes and the time-lapse video that was recorded together with the file that's 116 megabytes you can delete the time-lapse video in which case it's going to uh, make the file smaller about 140 megabytes the file sizes for your artworks of course will depend on a lot of factors like what's the resolution how many layers there are and how complex is your drawing. So for example, with this very simple sketch, this is just 20 megabytes, whereas the sketch that I drew yesterday, that's 140. So if you have one gig of storage, um, the ballpark figure would be something like, um, maybe you can create about 10 files to 50 files depending on the file size so if you have 50 gigs you can look at creating about 500 pieces of uh, complex detailed artworks to maybe a thousand thousand five or maybe two thousand uh, smaller files it is very difficult for me to tell you how much storage you need without uh, knowing your workflow and how complex your files are but 128 gigs of storage with the base model is a good starting point. 
So you can choose to upgrade the storage to 256 gigs or you can choose to just get the base model and then purchase cloud storage. Um, let me show you some examples of cloud storage. If you get the base model iPad Pro, you can consider getting the 200 gigs iCloud plan. So you can use 128 gigs of that iCloud plan to back up your whole iPad and that will leave you with around 70 gigs of online storage. So if you run out of space on your iPad, you can actually um, transfer your Procreate files onto the iCloud drive, which is what I have done here. So now I have backups of these files online. One is actually a Procreate file and the other is a JPEG. And there is this little cloud icon to tell me that the files are online. So if I want to, I can download the files back onto the iPad. With Microsoft OneDrive, I can see thumbnails for the JPEG, but not for the Procreate file, which is why when I transfer my Procreate files to online storage, I always create JPEG files in addition to the original file format. If you don't want to deal with the manual uploading and backing up of your own files, then just get the iPad Pro with 256 gigs of storage and get the iCloud plan with 200 gigs or more. I would consider the iCloud plan to be an essential buy. Now, if you create art professionally or if you are using your iPad Pro to make money, you will definitely need to back up your iPad. You cannot afford to not have a backup because uh, if your iPad is stolen or if it's broken for whatever reason, at least you still have your work uh, stored online as backup. So that is incredibly important. All right, to conclude, is the M1 iPad Pro worth the money or is it worth upgrading from the previous models? If you are using the models from 2018 and 2020, I would say it's a definite no to upgrading because you will be spending extra money to buy a tablet that does essentially the same things that your old tablet can do. Maybe for a certain tasks, uh, it will be faster, uh, like video editing, but when it comes to drawing, um, just general work, checking emails, uh, social media, watching videos, the user experience is going to be very similar. Um, yeah, when you're watching HDR movies, you get to see black blacks, darker blacks, slightly better contrast, but to me, I don't feel like it's worth uh, selling your current iPad Pro, the 2018 or 2020 model at a loss and then spend extra money to buy this new iPad Pro. If you are upgrading from a really old model like a 2017 iPad Pro, then um, I would say it's more worthwhile to make that upgrade. If this is the first time you are buying an iPad, then it's definitely worth the money because it's a great tablet. It has fantastic performance and with the current specifications and with 8 gigs of RAM, it's going to last you for a long time. But for people who are using older iPad models and if your workflow is still smooth, uh, your drawing process is still smooth, there is no lag uh, whatsoever, your iPad is still serving you well. There are not many reasons to upgrade unless you really just have too much money. At the time of making this video, iPad OS continues to be a limitation <laughs> on this tablet. I mean, the file set functionality, it has to be better that should be better multitasking. You can't just uh, transfer files and wait for the file transfer to finish before you can do other work. That affects productivity. So hopefully Apple can announce uh, something significant during WWDC 2021. We'll see about that. All right. If you guys have any questions for me, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I hope this review is helpful. See you guys again. Bye.